Okay, I want to take just a minute of your time and I want to go over something that every trapper should have in his truck. Not something you really need in your trap bag, but you're going to have situations as you're trapping that, that these two products could become invaluable and keep your trap line working. I'm going to do a couple of videos real quick. One of them is going to be the use of a lubricant while you're out on the trap line and why that's important to you because you're putting your traps in dirt and mud and they're getting bit on and they're getting half froze and you got acidic soil you got all these different things that doesn't treat metal very well and the thing to keep in mind the more precision your trap is the more maintenance it takes but most of the time the more precision that trap is the better catches it will make because it is more precision but you have to think a little bit ahead when you're dealing with traps like this. Okay, now this is a, a, a KB 5.5 trap. I've used these forever, very expensive trap. It is a very uh, precision style trap, tremendous coyote and bobcat and fox trap, even though it's got a smaller jaw spread, but it is a great trap. It has rivets instead of having really loose sloppy jaws coming through here. The precision of this trap is because everything is so tight and that's the reason it works so good. So these rivets right here, they're going to get corrosion. Even though you're going to boil and, and die and everything you're going to do to your traps, you're going to have, sometimes you're going to get corrosion. Now a way to easily remedy this in the field is the silicon spray. Okay, this silicon spray it's odorless, it's tasteless, it's, it's what I use when I'm cleaning up my, my mixers and my grinders. It's food grade silicone spray. It's a lubricant, it's, it's kind of slimy feeling when you put on stuff. It'll act like WD-40. Now, if you don't have this and your traps aren't working right, everybody knows what WD-40 is. Now you can use WD-40 and I know what you're thinking, well coyotes will smell it. They may or may not, I don't really know, but I can tell you that I've used it on cow traps like on my KBs when they start getting in bad shape and cows really don't seem to care. But either way, I'm allowing my traps to keep functioning because no one wants a half functioning trap. Now on the KB, here are the rivets. Well, it's a, it's a simple thing to fix most of the time. So we got our rivets right here. Simply spray this down on both sides open and close the, the trap a few times and that silicone will work inside that rivet and it's going to work very well. Nothing wrong with the trap, it's just I didn't maintain it to the point in the field sometimes that it needs to be. Now this is a CDR, another very expensive precision trap. I use them for bobcats, beaver, otter, coyotes, I use them for all kind of stuff. It also has rivets. Now Matthew Beach came over, he was a student in our Texas trapping school and in Australia, they don't really like these because what they were finding is they would set the trap, the dingo would step on it, but the jaws wouldn't close all the way and they'd lose the dingo. What was happening is the rivets are so tight, being a precision trap, the reason it functions so well is that precision, that if corrosion got in there, it wouldn't allow the jaws to come up when it needed to. So actually what me and Matthew was doing, testing this down in Texas, was taking WD-40 and we were spraying these rivets just like that and we're opening and closing the trap a few times and it's just like it come out of the, the dye bath. Really simple, it's just it's something when you need it, you really need it. Okay, this is a TS-85, another very good trap. It's got a nut and bolt system on the bottom. Sometimes this will get corroded because you've got these traps in a lot of bad situation being in mud, acidic water, just nastiness. Stuff will get built up on here, you get a little bit of corrosion. No big deal if you got if you got this in your truck. Work the pan up a little bit and it'll start working just the way it was meant to be and then that way you're good to go down the road. Now I'm gonna talk a little bit about dog proof traps. Uh, you, you gotta keep in mind when, you're, when you buy a dog proof trap, you kinda gotta know what it is. You've got a lot of traps on the market, good traps, no doubt but they're, they're designed to be sloppy and, and everything like that. But even those traps are gonna need some maintenance. Now, one of the original dog tree traps that really became uh, popular was a little grizz trap. Now, I'm gonna show you the parts you need to keep lubricated on this trap where you're gonna have a coon that's gonna have to be Arnold Schwarzenegger to pull 
the lever up to catch him and it's not going to happen. So even these you got to maintain or your catch is going to go down. Okay, you see this rod and then you've got where the trigger pivots up and down. That'll get corrosion on the rod just like this one has because I haven't used these traps in years. And then what it'll do is it'll put a lot of pressure here so the coon, when he's trying to pull up on the trigger, he's got to break loose all that corrosion. It's a simple fix. If you see this in the field, spray it down. Work this back and forth a lot. See how it's breaking up? Now it's just really, it's the way the trap was designed. It's sloppy like that, but you still have to maintain these somewhat. So at the end of the year, when you put these away, or the next year before you start again, make sure that this thing moves up and down or your catch is going to be way off. This is a Freedom Brand Dog Proof Trap. These are some of the, the test models that I was using. Got a little bit better spring on them now than they did at that time, more better protected. But I actually took these traps and put them in salt water after a while down in Texas to see what happens to them when they get corroded. Now these are un unlike a lot of the other dog proof traps on the market, not knocking them at all, but this is a precision made dog proof trap. I think personally that's part of the reason my catch was so good with them, that's the reason I'm going with them. But it is a precision trap, just like the KB, just like the CDR, just like an MJ600 or an MB650. Traps like that are precision traps. You've got to keep those maintained. They've got tighter clearances for everything to work. This has a nut and bolt system right here, and it also has a pin right here, and you need to make sure those stay lubricated. Okay, here's the nut and bolt. You get a bunch of muck, and, and it starts rusting up in here. You'll need to take your silicone spray and hit that. Work that back and forth. And also, like on the grizz, you've got a pin that's coming through here where the trigger actually has to be able to rotate on. So you'll need to hit that with a spray. They may not have to do this once a year, maybe not at all during a single year, but it depends on how much corrosion is getting on your traps and how that you're finishing those traps. Now, this is a new dog proof trap, not, not one of the prototypes I was using. It has the same nut and bolt system. Here's got the, the better protected spring and all that stuff. It still has the pin where the trigger has to be able to rotate. You can see how it moves the trigger right there. That has to be able to rotate on there. So this point right here and up here at the nut and bolt, just take your silicone or your WD-40. Everybody has WD-40, so if you don't have the silicone, you can use the WD-40. And everything will be able to work right as far as this moving back and forth. So when you close it, it actually closes the way that it's supposed to. And it actually, down here on this other point, it's in the shadows now, but this on this pivot point on the trigger, if you, if you leave that just like on the grizz trap where the trigger can rotate up and down, it allows all the precision parts of this trap to work. That's just one of the few things that you need to be aware of when you're working on any trap. Well, let's, let's talk a little bit about something because this is going to become more important on the next video I'm going to do. There's a lot of guys that are new to trapping that are coming into trapping. They see a lot of stuff on TV. They see stuff on YouTube, on, on stations like Wolfer Nation, different things like that. They order traps from somebody, just say Supplier A. They get a trap in and it doesn't work exactly the way it is if it was finely tuned or it was lubricated. So when you, when you get a trap, if you're new to trapping and it doesn't function the way you want to, start looking at it in a way, because believe it or not, very few traps are ready to go right out of the box. It's just something we in the trapping industry have been doing for years. It's expected from someone that's been in trapping a while. If you're new to it, it may not always be that way. You think it should just come that way from the factory. These guys are pumping these things out by the thousands. They get them close enough and they rely on the trapper to get it tuned the way he wants to get it tuned. So if you're, if you're using a, a grizz trap and the trigger didn't go up and down, it's your responsibility to lube that rod so the trigger will move up and down because you may have molasses or honey or something on there that's going to be working. If you have a CDR and you go to open the jaw and it goes Eek! and you got to really force them open, it may not close so you need to use some silicone on those rivets. Same thing on a Freedom um, Freedom Brand Dog Proof Trap. If it doesn't seem to close right or work right, check the lubrication. That should be the first thing that you should do. And we're going to go into another quick video here on how to tune 
a pan and a Freedom Brand dog proof trap. It's like a dogless foothold is what it's like, but I'm going to go into that next.